a few weeks back in Italy. 21 rivers uh, broke their banks. The Emilia Romagna Grand Prix will not take place. It's been uh, 48 hours of devastation. Formula One staff were told to leave the track. So I selected Imola in Assetto Corsa, lined up all 10 GT3 cars the game has to offer and slotted right behind them in a Porsche 911 GT3 R. All of them running medium compound tires, 100% AI strength, 10 laps, no pit stops, may the fastest car win. My name is Neil, welcome back to Hot Laps. Got a brilliant start courtesy to the rear engine design of the 911 giving me immense traction of the line. I quickly made up 4 places, going past the final one of them, the BMW Z4 through turn 1 and in the first braking zone I was side by side with the SLS AMG. A bit of contact, a massive coming together between the front runners, the Ferrari decided to murder the Lamborghini, the 650s and the AI 911 got caught up while the Ferrari MP412C and myself managed to weave past. Now let's get rid of my face. Now the MP412C is one of the slowest cars in this race, I was hoping to get past it soon enough. And opportunity came quite soon when the car decided to open up a gap inside and then close it down with murderous intent. Both of us did manage to get back on track, I wasn't happy about it. But here's the thing, the MP412C is so slow on the streets, I knew I just had to be in the striking distance at the entry of the start finish straight and I'll make the move stick, right here. Notice the difference in straight line speeds between these two cars. I thought the McLaren was opening up its insides but it decided to defend its inside line at the last second. I had to act fast to avoid contact but other than that it was a smooth move up to P2 now. Although the leading car was 3 seconds down the road. At the entry of turn 2 the McLaren did try to sneak up on the insides but didn't quite manage to make the move stick. Now notice how fast the BMW and the 650S have caught up to the MP412C. On the other hand, my job now is to chase down the leading car, that's the Ferrari. I did manage to bring the gap down by 4 tenths at the end of lap 2 and further 2 tenths at the end of lap 3. I was slightly off my pace but still, it was anybody's race up until this point. A massive oversteer at the entry of turn 2 in lap number 4 and all the 2 laps worth of hard work chasing the lead car down was undone just like that. The gap went straight past 3.5 seconds, a huge bummer really. But after a decent sector 2 and 3, I did manage to bring the gap down to 3.2 seconds. Almost the same as I had after lap 1. So all the progress I did make since the beginning of lap 2 had to be done all over again. That's the beginning of lap 5. 6 laps including this one for me to chase down a car leading by more than 3 seconds. Hint of oversteer at the entry of turn 2 once again but nothing too dramatic. In fact I gained some time on the leading car through this set of corners. Lap 5 was overall quite a fast one. A good sector 1 and sector 2. And with every passing corner I could notice myself getting closer and closer to the leading car. The result was a sub 145.5 lap time in the end. 7 tenths of a second shaved off the gap from the leading car helps. But in order to score an out and out race win, I had to keep up this pace for quite a few consecutive laps now. I didn't know how happy the tires were going to be with that, but I had to try. Well, spoiler alert, this lap was even faster than the last one. In fact, this lap, lap number 6, was actually a personal best in this car, the 911 GT3 R, on the medium tires, crucially. The softs would be faster, much faster, but since all the other cars are running mediums, so did I. Yeah, overall a solid lap. Uh, no major mistakes whatsoever. Now I do need to mention that I am running my custom setup in this race. I mean, yes, the 911's uh, rear engine design gives it incredible traction out of the corners, but the same design makes it prone to understeer. So I had to soften up the front suspensions, uh, stiffen up the rears to give it that balance of grip. And yeah, it did help. 
Also in order to combat understeer at the corner entries, I did bias the brake slightly towards the rear, which is why I am constantly getting oversteered at the entry of turn 2. A slight annoyance but it more than makes up for it throughout the rest of the lap. You can't have, there, there is no perfect setup as such. Well, lap number 6 is coming to an end. The lap time in the end was a 145.237 and the gap was down by almost a second in just a single lap. Didn't quite manage to have a smooth entry into turn 2 once again but at 145.3 lap 7 was a fast one as well. Fast forwarding 1.5 laps to the middle of lap number 8 and at this point the chase down was converted into a battle for lead. A good traction of turn 7 saw me pull alongside the Ferrari. Not quite enough to make a move but still enough to ruin its racing line. That completely ruined the exit for the Ferrari and once again I was side by side entering turn 11. And once again the Ferrari ran off track. Now I could have made the move stick out of turn 13 but I didn't get the traction for it. Fortunately the Ferrari's traction was worse and once again heading into the chicane we were side by side. This time though ruining the Ferrari's racing line worked, third time lucky. It ran straight off track at the exit of the chicane and this time I managed to make the move stick and the Ferrari was done for. Or was it? You see the issue was not with the car, it was running like a dream. It was with me. You see I used these shoes to avoid getting blisters on the bottom of my foot from pressing the brake pedal again and again. The shoes I used to avoid blisters were the shoes that were giving me blisters and since the beginning of lap 8 I think that blister burst open so yeah quite uncomfortable last couple of laps and you might notice my lap times are no longer in the mid 145s and I was missing braking points I was having to let the car post for longer than I was happy with or to avoid excessive pressure on my braking foot. In the end, somehow despite having my worst lap time by far on the last lap, apart from the first lap of course, and almost screwing up the final corner, I did manage to hold the Ferrari back for just long enough to bring my car home for a P1. Well, that was satisfying race overall. Well, here are the results and one car that's missing here is the Huracan GT3. It crashed in the first lap itself, which is why no fastest lap data or nothing whatsoever. Now the MP412C and the Nissan GTR are the two standout slow cars in the GT3 class in this game. Both of them were holding a bunch of cars behind them. And that was the end of race for those cars. Talking about the lap times, here they are, I did get the fastest lap, 145.237. Apart from that, all the AI cars, I have seen the AI cars drop to 145.8, 7s, unfortunately it didn't in this case, but the Ferrari didn't bore me at all, I did quite enjoy racing that car. Here's the list of cars so once again, and that's it for today. Let me know your thoughts about this video down in the comment box below. Also if you have any favorite car or track that you want me to feature in a future video, let me know about those as well and I shall try to cover them. While you're down there, hit like if you liked it, share if you loved it. If you want to see me go around in a solo session in the Ferrari 488 GT3 around Imola, that video is right here. I'll see you there, until then, hang on, drive hard, drive safe, take care.